So we've made this special show, and I'd like to answer as many questions as possible on the topic from our viewers. Hundreds and hundreds of emails, as usual, and, you know, it never changes, does it? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The first couple of questions from our viewers, again. Question number one. Is the Taraweeh prayer a sunnah or is it a fad? Can a person miss it? As far as the question is concerned that is Taraweeh or is Qiyamul Layl during Ramadan, is it fard or is it a sunnah? Mm -hmm. As we discussed earlier, a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, or number three, in the book of Taraweeh, hadith number 2012, and it gives how Muhammad offered in the mosque, Qiyamul Layl during Ramadan, and people joined him. The next day the news spread, and when he came the next day, the full mosque was filled. The third day it was overflowing, and fourth day, purposely, Though the mosque was overflowing, he did not come out for Qiyamul Layl, for the Taraweeh, which mm -hmm. people call. And when he came for the Fajr Salah, he said, not that he did not know that people were waiting for me, but I purposely didn't come because I didn't want offering the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan is a fard. So from this hadith we come to know that it is not a fard. But the other hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, Book of Tarawi, Hadith number 2009, the beloved Prophet said that anyone who offers the night prayer in Ramadan with the belief and seeking Allah's reward, all his past sins will be forgiven. So based on this, you come to know, though it's not a fard, it's a very important sunnah, it's sunnat muqaddah That means a very highly recommended sunnah of the Prophet. Though it's not a fard, it's sunnah and very highly recommended sunnah. And no Muslim should miss it unless he really has a valid reason. He should, as far as possible, offer it and seek Allah's reward. So all his sins will be forgiven. Jazakallah khair. Next question from our viewer. Many imams recite the Quran in a very fast way during the Taraweh or Qiyam al layl they also perform ruku and sujood in a fast manner, which makes it difficult for the followers to supplicate properly. Is it allowed to pray in this manner? It is very common that many of the mosques, because they want to finish the full Quran in the month of Ramadan in Tarawi, and they want to make it as short as possible so people finish it, they do recite very fast, and very often you see that they go in the ruku and sujood very fast. And many a time, once I was in one of the mosques, and when the Imam went in the sujood, I went after him. He got up again, went again. I was yet in my first sujood, <laughs> and he was doing a second sujood. <laughs> Allah Akbar. <laughs> so is it right or is it wrong? It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, in number one, in the book of Salah, Hadith number 757, that once the Prophet enters the mosque, and there is another man who follows him. He offers the salah. And after offering salah, that man, he wishes the Prophet, assalamu alaikum. The Prophet greets back and says that, go back and pray because you have not prayed. The man goes back and he comes back to the Prophet. The Prophet says, go back and pray, you have not prayed. Again, the person goes for the third time. He prays and comes back. The Prophet again says, go back and pray, for you have not prayed, for the third time. So the man says, I cannot pray better than this. Oh, Prophet, please teach me how to pray. So then the Prophet says that after seeing the takbir, you recite while standing in the qiyam as much of the Quran that you know by heart, whatever the Quran you know by heart you recite. Then you bow down, go in your hukuf, until you are at ease, and then say, Glory be to Allah, Subhanahu bin Nadeem. Then stand up straight until you're at ease. Then go in sujood with calmness until you're at ease. And then say Subhanahu bin Allah, Glory be to Allah, who's the most high, thrice. Then get up again until you're at ease. And then continue your prayer like that. That means all, especially your ruku and your sujood, 
and when you get up from your ruku and in between the sujood you should be at ease you can't go up and down fast if you do that it is as though your prayer has not been accepted as though you have not prayed so if you pray in this fast manner tarawi where ruku sujood and fast fast it is as though you have not prayed so it is best that you pray slowly with calmness and if you really feel that you can't offer 20 then offer it raka but with peace with ease and with calmness the best is that with peace ease and calmness and long tarawi should be long it should not be having competition with the other mosques you know which we have many a times <laughs> when the many mosques they compete who is going to finish the tarawi yes. faster yes that's very unfortunate but it's true well next question is is it compulsory that the imam should recite the complete quran in the nights of ramadan in tarawi is it necessary that the followers should listen to the whole of the quran in tarawi so two parts of the question there is no hadith in which the prophet has mentioned or the sahaba that it is compulsory to recite the full quran it is preferable it is mustahab it's better because you know if you recite as much as the quran in the month of ramadan it's good for you so many people may not be reciting at home but at least during the qiyamul layl in ramadan the people at least listen to the quran so it's preferable it's not a fard and but naturally if it's recited in the qiyamul layl it's obligatory for the muttadi for the people praying behind to listen but it's not a fard that you should recite the full quran but most of the mosques majority of the mosques complete the quran because it's good mashallah there are some mosques which i know that it becomes difficult for people to listen because you know if you have to recite the full quran in the full month of ramadan it is about one juz a day so make close to that and it becomes difficult so there are some mosques which pray half juz on average so they finish half the quran in the full month of ramadan next ramadan they finish the next half <laughs> so all is acceptable mm -hmm. but it's preferable to finish the full quran mm -hmm. you know unless you know that there are small children and they cannot of us so one or two mosques have it alhamdulillah no problem mm -hmm. but preferable to finish the full quran but it's not compulsory next question where should a woman pray tarawih i mean we've answered partly onto this question at home or in the masjid if she prays at home can she lead the congregation or a congregation of women it's mentioned in sahih tarqib hadith number 336 where the beloved prophet said that the best mosque for a woman is her innermost room her innermost chamber and the best place for a woman to pray is her inner room that's the best and in another hadith of musnad ahmad volume number 6 hadith number 27202 which also mentioned in sahih at tarqib hadith number 335 once a lady asked the prophet i would love to pray with you the lady said and the prophet replied i know you'd love to pray with me but your prayer you know in a room would be better than praying in your house the prayer in your house would be better than praying in the courtyard your praying in your courtyard would be better than praying in the mosque where you live we are around your people your praying in the mosque where you live around with people is better than praying in my mosque that means for a woman the best prayer is the inner room masha and the way is hadith that praying in your room is better than the house house better than the courtyard courtyard better than the mosque in your area then mosque is better than the mosque of the prophet though mm -hmm. the prophet said it's mentioned in sahih muslim volume number 2 hadith number 3 to 1 zero that praying in my mosque is equivalent to a thousand prayers that means also if you pray in the mosque sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's equal to praying a thousand times in any other mosque but this hadith is mainly referring to the men because no two sahih hadith can contradict so this hadith mainly refers to the men for the women the best place is the house especially her inner room and there's a hadith in Sunan Abu Daud, volume number one, book of Salah, hadith number five ninety one. Ummi Warka, may Allah be pleased with her. Amen. 
she comes to the Prophet and says that, I would like to have a muaddin in my house. And the Prophet gave her permission. The next hadith, Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number one, Book of Salah, hadith number 592, it says that Muhammad he went to a house after appointing the muaddin and he asked her to lead the prayer in congregation and the woman in the house, they joined her. And the narrator says that he saw the muaddin, he was an old person. It's further mentioned in a Sahih Hadith of Bihaqi, Hadith number 1922. Hadith Aisha, may Allah repeat with her, who's the wife of the Prophet, she says that she led the congregation of the woman. She was the Imam, but she stood in the middle of the row. And another hadith in Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, hadith number 4953, say Umm Salma, who was also the wife of the Prophet, may be peace with her. Amen. Even she said that she led, she was the Imam of a congregation of women, and she was standing in the center of the first row. So here it indicates that the women, they can pray, but it is better for them to pray in the inner room better than going in the mosque. But mm. they are permitted to go in the mosque, as we discussed yeah. earlier yesterday, mm. Mm. that praying in the mosque is permitted. But for them, the inner room is better than the house. The house is better than the courtyard. Courtyard better than the mm. mosque close to them, than the mosque of the Prophet. But they can pray. They can go to the mosque. If they pray at home, they can have a congregation. There's no problem at all. And a woman can lead the congregation according to the various hadith I mentioned. Mm. With women? Yes. Yeah. Next question, uh, Dr. Zakir. Is it okay for uh, a person who's following an imam in a congregational salah to hold a Qur'an in front of him whilst the imam's reciting? As far as holding the Qur'an for a muqtadi, while offering Qiyamu Layl in Ramadan, and we do see that sometimes people hold, when we mm. see the live telecast of the Qiyamu Layl in Ramadan from the Haram, we find some mm. people holding the Musaf, Mm. the copy of the Qur'an, is it allowed? When we realize that if a person holds the Mus'haf, the copy of the Qur'an, he is unable to follow that keep his right hand over his left hand, which is a requirement for Salah. He can't put his right hand over the left hand, so he's not following one of the requirements of Salah. Furthermore, it will be a distraction for him to turn the page over. You know, if the mm. Imam keeps on reciting for him to turn, it's a distraction. Furthermore, it will also prevent him from looking at the place of sujood. Normally your eyes should be looking at the place of sujood, that's what the hadith says. So if they're looking at the musaf, they cannot look there. And it will prevent them from various other actions of ruku, it will be uncomfortable, sujood uncomfortable. So it is not advisable for a person mm -hmm. to hold the musaf and you know, while the imam is reciting. He should just listen to the Quran, what he knows by heart. Alhamdulillah, what he doesn't know, he should pay attention and try and listen as the Quran says that whenever you hear the Qur'an, you hear the Qur'an, then pay attention to it and listen to it. So that's what you should do. It's yeah. not advisable to hold the Musaf. Okay, that's well answered. Thank you very much. Totally agree with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Another question for you, Dr. Zakir. The viewer says, I pray Tarawi in the mosque behind the Imam, but I want to pray more Raka in Tahajud. Should I avoid witr behind the imam, or should I pray the witr behind the imam and later repeat my witr? As far as the practice and the saying of Muhammad Sallallahu is concerned, a beloved prophet said, it's mentioned in Sunnah Abu Dawud, volume number one, book of Salah, hadith number 1370. The beloved prophet, he said, that when the people asked him to stay longer and pray more. So he said that a person who prays with the Imam till he ends, it is as though he has prayed for the full night. And the other hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the Book of Salah, hadith number 472, which says that when the person asks the Prophet about Qiyamul Layl, the Prophet said that you have to pray two rakat, followed by two rakat, then two rakat, then two rakat, and when you fear dawn coming, then pray one rakat. And the other hadith says that you can pray as much as you wish. So based on these two hadith, the best a person can have two options. One is that he has to pray till the end of the imam. He can't come away from the salah and not offer witr. 
because then he will not be, as the Prophet said, he would not be like a person who's prayed till the end along with the Imam, as the hadith of Abu Dawud 1370 says, that if he prays till the end along with the Imam, as we have prayed the full night. So the best is he prays along with the Imam, also prays with her, and then afterwards, later on, if he wants to offer tahajjud, tahajjud the same as qiyamul layl, tahajjud means waking up again, so he goes home, he sleeps, and he wakes up again. He can again pray, but he should not offer with her because there's no two with her. There's only one with her. Or the other option is that he prays along with the Imam. And when the Imam, in the last rakah of with her, when he ends his salah, this person should get up and pray one more rakat. So when he prays one more rakat, it doesn't become with her. And when he goes home, prays the tahajjud, and then prays the with her. Here, he's following the hadith, he's praying till the end with the... Imam, so he gives the sawab of praying for the full night, and then he goes home, and he prays, and the witr is normally the last prayer is preferable. So he goes home, and he again prays the tajud, and after tajud he prays the witr. That is the second option, which is preferable, but the first is also fine. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Next question: How much Quran should one recite in each raka of taraweh? There is no fixed rule per se. There's no limitation, but the Prophet did say that as much as you recite, it's better. We have in the hadith of uh, Mustadak al-Hakim, hadith number 1160, that the beloved Prophet, he said, that anyone who recites 100 verses, he will be counted among those who are obedient. The next hadith of Mustadak al-Hakim, hadith number 1161, that anyone who recites 100 verses, 